So hello everyone, I get, I'll get this cursor out of the way here. So we're here today to talk about Ajax and Joomla. Now uh, before I get started, I have a couple of prizes to give away and um, I should also let you know that, well, especially since it's a smaller group, this presentation can be much more informal, more conversational. I typically give most of my presentations that way. My formal presentation up here is actually normally about 15 minutes and I have a lot of code that we can demo. So this can go different ways depending on questions and what you want to look at. Uh, I have a couple of new things that we can possibly look at uh, if there's time. I mentioned earlier I also have candy. So if anyone wants some candy, ask questions, I'll throw candy at you. If you fall asleep, I'll throw candy at you. No, I'm just kidding. But um, definitely, I mean, I, I will be more than happy to give this away. I, it's actually funny because I picked this up thinking I'm gonna take this home to my daughter. Then I realized I'm traveling with such a small bag that it likely wouldn't survive the trip and I'd end up with glass on my laptop. So I figure if I can offload it during my talk, that would help. So my name is Matt Thomas. I'm a member of the Joomla production leadership team. Uh, a lot of people within the Joomla community know me as Between Brain. That's actually the name of my company. Uh, and the reason I mention that is that you can find me online in virtually any place, digital. After today, if you have any questions, just look for Between Brain. You can look for BetweenBrain.com or on Twitter at BetweenBrain, so on and so forth. This talk is also online already at BetweenBrain.com slash talk slash hello dash Ajax world. And as the shirt implies, I'm also known, becoming known these days actually as a calm Ajax guy. And the sad thing is I actually paid extra to have the shirt expedited, expressed to my house before this uh, presentation. And the first thing I did this morning is I slept late and, slept late and I was running to the... Uh, venue and I spilled coffee on it, so just overlook the stain. So Com Ajax is actually really why we're here to talk about Ajax today. Uh, I should recognize that Ajax and Joomla isn't anything new, it's just how we do it these days is what's changed and it's actually gotten a lot easier, uh, at least in my opinion, because this thing called the Joomla Ajax interface, it's a component that's in the Joomla core distribution as of version 3.2. There's also a version available for 1.5 and 2.5 on GitHub, along with sample modules and a plugin, some of which we'll look at today. Now, basically, um, Com Ajax is a component that I originally created last year, originally for Joomla 1.5, and this was done while working on projects for the Guggenheim Museum. Uh, I've been a contractor for the Guggenheim for almost two years now. I work on a project basis. And there have been a number of situations where we wanted to introduce Ajax to improve the performance of certain parts of the website, but we weren't able to easily because of, of situations in Joomla that we'll talk about in a few minutes, but the specific context that we are trying to implement Ajax in is with standalone modules in Joomla. Now when I talk about a standalone module in context of Ajax, that means there's a module that doesn't have a corresponding component to support the Ajax functionality. And so that causes some issues and as a consultant and contractor it causes me an issue because I had to tell the client, no, we can't do it. And that led me to trying to find a way of finding a way to do it. So basically the long story short is Com Ajax resolves the limitations in Joomla of not being able to make requests to modules and plugins. Now right now that might sound a little nebulous and it probably is, but we'll talk about more specifically what that is in a few minutes. First I wanted to give a, a really quick overview of Ajax if anyone's not familiar with it. I'm going to guess that most of you are since you're here because the talk is titled Ajax so you might know something about it. Uh, but essentially Ajax is using a combination of web technologies. A lot of it is based in JavaScript on the client side but it's all about making asynchronous requests to the server and handling the response from those requests on the client side based on events. So if a user clicks on something, uh, the JavaScript might make a request to the server to get some more information and change something in the DOM, all without reloading the page. Implication here is performance. You can do things, you can first of all offload loading of assets to an Ajax event, you can have different user interaction based on Ajax events, you can update a small piece of the page with Ajax, whereas before you have to reload all the assets. So it's a great thing to use for performance, improving user, uh, uh, the user workflow, the user interaction. Now, 
an issue that we have in Joomla and reminding you that a lot of the context is when you're developing a standalone module for AJAX functionality, that is a module that does not have a corresponding component to support AJAX. One obstacle we have is that every HTTP request in Joomla is supposed to be routed to a component. Now I say supposed to be because there are ways to work around this and over the years there have been some creative solutions, some more creative than other to implement AJAX in Joomla. And some are more performant, some are more secure, but there have been quite a few different ways of doing this. And basically, the idea of Com Ajax is to find a way that works pretty well and that we can all reuse it. So we don't have to keep coming up with our own solutions. So basically the challenge that we're going to talk about a lot today, but there, there's actually a secondary topic we'll talk about if you have time, is how do we create a standalone module where there is no component that supports Ajax functionality? That's really the, the challenge that a lot of developers seem to face. There seem to be a lot of Ajax modules versus components that have Ajax in them. And so that's basically what Com Ajax is. That's the solution. It's a component that allows you to make requests to modules and plugins with. It sounds, it sounds almost um, more obvious, but it actually is a pretty simple component. I should also clarify that Com Ajax is not a component that you will see in the back end of Joomla. If you look at the components menu in Joomla 3.2 plus, you won't see Com Ajax and you can't create a menu item to it. So it's something that developers work with. It's all about making HTTP requests. So it's one reason why I'm talking about it is because it's not obvious, it's not visible. Here's an example of an AJAX request. So I can do this in both screens. Using uh, jQuery, and you can see up here we're calling option equals com AJAX, plugin equals hello kitty, format equals JSON. We'll talk about what that really means, but this is an example of it, it's say I had a standalone module and I'm sorry, a plugin called Hello Kitty, and I wanted to implement an AJAX request to that plugin. This is what my AJAX request would look like. We'll talk about this a little bit more and we'll show you some working examples to where it should make a little more sense. Talking about COM AJAX, really it's all about the HTTP request. So I figured that was a good place to look at um, in this talk, to look at the anatomy of the request. So I just mentioned that um, option equals COM AJAX. Every call to a module or plugin that's developed, that's developed to use COM AJAX, the HTTP request must start with option equals COM AJAX. Second parameter is you designate whether it's a module or plugin, and then the name of that module or plugin. So if, if I have a module called mod session, mod underscore session, the second parameter would be module equals session. Or my Hello Kitty plugin equals plugin equals Hello Kitty. Com Ajax also requires a format. So you have to designate the format of the response. If you want it in JSON, uh, raw, there's other formats that Joomla support such as HTML. And debug is one that's specific to Com Ajax. It's basically a developer friendly, human readable format. So it really helps you when you're developing the, the Ajax uh, modular plugin. When you are using the module parameter, it implies a few things to you as a developer. Uh, the first thing is it, that it basically enforces is you have to have a helper file. So when you say module equals session, for example, it will look in JPath base, modules, mod underscore session, and for, look for helper.php. So Com Ajax always looks for a helper.php file in the module if you're developing a module to use Com Ajax. It also implies the class name. Now this is a standard Joomla convention, the class name, this just reinforces it. So if I'm saying module equals, um, any examples? Login. <laughs> so if I say module equals login, this would have to be mod uppercase first. So mod uppercase L login helper would be the class name within my helper file. Does that make sense? Any questions? No? Where is that not making sense? It's making sense. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, no, no, it's okay. Oh, okay, no, it's okay. 
Anyone wanting candy? Anyone? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, and I have to remind you, I have a t-shirt and a 12 months of fish in the red component to give away, so. Those probably won't hurt as hard as the candy. That's true. That's true. I will award those to uh, people with the best or most creative or interesting questions, or if only two questions are asked, then those two, two people will win. So optional. Optional URL parameters, and this might seem obvious, but basically it's anything that your module or plugin needs. So, um, actually, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong slide. Optional when dealing with modules is the method. Now, in a module in the helper file, you have a PHP class. And then within that class, you have functions or, or methods, depending on if you want to look at it object-oriented or not. But um, the default is on, a, or I'm sorry, get Ajax. Get Ajax is the default method that com Ajax looks for. So within your class, by default, if you do not use the method parameter and give it a value, com Ajax will look for the get Ajax method. You can pass different prefixes for that method if you'd like. So for example, if you have multiple Ajax events in your JavaScript, you can change the method that com Ajax looks for. So you can fire different things in different events and different timing. So here's a, a quick example of mod equals session. Standard Joomla layout for the file structure module, mod session, we have a helper. And this is just all standard Joomla conventions over here. I'll put this, this screens to keep it mixed up. You can see class equals mod session helper public static function get ajax. And I'm just returning a value, a static value of hello ajax world. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, com ajax was developed to be easy to use, and so we try to keep things very simple. Plugins, now plugins are kind of an edge case. And to be honest with you, when I was creating com ajax, the idea was, well, I really need to support modules. If I'm gonna do modules, why not plugins? And so initially there really wasn't much use for it, but I found the use for plugins using com Ajax. Actually I found two so far. And I think when I show this to you and it kind of explains to you why I did it this way, it, it might, might ring a bell and hopefully other people say, well that's kind of cool, I'm going to start doing that as well. And hopefully introduce some possibilities for people. Plugins are a little bit simpler. Plugins are event driven. So when you designate plugin equals let's say latest articles, you're actually triggering the Ajax event on Ajax, whatever that value is. So for example, if I say plugin equals latest articles, the, the plugin event is on Ajax latest articles. And whatever plugin, Ajax plugin that has that event will fire. And that response will get returned to your Ajax request. Or if it's not an Ajax request, anything making HTTP request to that URL. It's kind of a little lead-in. So this is a quick example of what the plugin would look like. You see plugins Ajax. There is an Ajax group now in Joomla. Latest articles. Very simple, but we have plug Ajax latest articles, standard Joomla convention for the class name, and the function on Ajax latest articles. Any questions up until this point? Okay. Okay, so this is what I was talking about before, additional data. Anything that your module or plugin needs, you can pass via additional parameters in the URL. Pretty straightforward if, you, if you've worked with HTTP requests. So you can pass in command equals add, delete, whatever, data values. Um, if you want to have some sort of debug function, whatever you want. Just additional parameters, you tack them on there, give them values, and it's at, at your will. So that's the introduction to Com Ajax. Now at this point, I, I typically show off a, a particular module or plugin. I figure since we're such a small group, I'd ask you what you would all want to look at first, or if you have any questions up until this point on the theoretical before we get into code. Do I have to throw candy at anyone? Well, I do. Yes. Ajax can handle any type of an HTTP. So if it, it can handle I've got an issue with too many Java, JavaScript extensions or different versions being pulled up on certain pages. 
Okay. So can I use the Ajax to either just pull out what's needed for the page, or does it just load all the library data? That's um, yeah, Ajax really wouldn't help you, if I understand the question correctly. All those libraries might be there for other reasons. The, the Ajax specifically would be used for not loading certain content right away. Like let's say if you had uh, an event list of 60 items on it and you, you want to improve the page performance or the load time on your page, originally you're loading all 60. And let's say you want to improve the performance of that page load, you might load only five. And then when the user scrolls down that list past the fifth one, you would fire an Ajax event to, to make a request for the next five. What's the name of images? Exactly. Yeah, you see that on Twitter, on the infinite sure. scroll, uh, I think Facebook. You can post comments. It just, I'm sorry? Yeah, pretty much they all do it. And so in your particular use case, um, you know, it's hard with not knowing what the scripts are being used for. Right. There, there might be a way you could do it with Ajax. It, it really depends, and, and that's... You could break it apart. You could break it apart, exactly. You could load additional JavaScript with the Ajax request, possibly. You got a question? Chris? Well, yeah, I was, I was just trying to roll over different ways of doing this. And the thing that came up was you've got, you're drilling down through some kind of list. Would that be a typical Ajax use, or would you sideload that content and just have it kind of thing through it? You, let's just say computers and then make and model and then whatever, that kind of thing. I think it depends how big the list is. But you could definitely use Ajax. I was actually looking at a project that somebody showed me earlier today. They're using Ajax for that because okay. they have a they have a um, a multi select situation where it's all makes and models and years of cars. So that's a huge list. So when you select Chevy, it uses Ajax to load the Chevy models, and then when you click on one module, exactly, you click on Impala, then it shows it load it uses Ajax to load just the years Impala was made. So in that situation, I think that would be a great use of Ajax. If it's 30 or 60 items, probably not worth it. But if you have 60 of those 60 selects, then it might be a different situation. So definitely. Any other questions before we jump in the code? In that example, there would be like, a, you choose a car and then goes to the server and gets what are options for that car and then... Exactly. And, and the whole point there is that you're not having to reload the entire page. You know, exactly. I mean, if, if before Ajax, you would, on the drop down, you make a select and then it would refresh and load the whole page again, over, over again. So with Ajax, you can just load that list. Load that list and populate it. Boom, boom, boom. So I'm thinking about working on a prototype for something. It's basically getting, I need stats. That has to be kind of real time. Okay. But that actually will work out here because it's not that large. Okay. So probably at least the maybe 10 items, but it has to be kind of a real time dashboard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's perfect. I don't have to reload the whole page, just that module position may not have. Exactly. Exactly. And, that, and thank you. And that's exactly the context that where Com Ajax comes into play, it's modules. Because you can, you, you've always been able to do, to do Ajax with components in Joomla. But how many people really want to go through the, the effort of developing an entire component just for a multi-select or like a dashboard type thing? Theoretically with a module, for example, the Hello Ajax World module I created in five minutes, I think, two files. Whereas a component takes a lot more time. It, I mean, obviously you could build a skeleton component, but then you start having all these components for just a little bit of functionality. Uh, a good example actually, uh, earlier last week, I was looking at a prospective client website built in Joomla 3.2.3. There were 15 components installed in that website. At least five were empty skeleton components just for Ajax functionality to support modules. So, okay, that's, that's a lot of work to create all those extra components when actually you could just use Com Ajax and create two files in a module. So that's really, really what I'm trying to drive home is that 
that's the use case is modules, like a dashboard or a multi-select. Those can all be modules, and it makes it really easy to develop them. So I'm thinking maybe let's take a look at a module. And um, so I have a, a, um, a demo that I have installed here. So this is my Hello Ajax World module up here to the right. Now this is a module that is available on GitHub, github.com slash joomla-ajax-interface. And it's a really exciting module. Ready for this? When I type in a word, and if I spell it correctly, and I click submit, it says, Hello, Ajax will submit. Now it doesn't do this by reloading the page. I, I will. I, I will prove it to you. If I type in a word "Bob," for example, and I click a menu item which forces the page to reload, it changes the word "search" or "Bob" back to "search." But I can do the same thing here in my module. Doesn't reload. Okay, I know it's not very exciting. But it's a really simple example of using Ajax. And actually, this is, this is probably one of the simplest examples. And the one reason why I created it is you can use this to scaffold from in your own client projects or while learning how Com Ajax works. So we'll take a look at the, um, the code back there. So this is, this is the website that's actually installed. I apologize, it's a little bit low. But you'll see this is the standard Joomla structure. Mod Hello Ajax World, I have a template, a view file. I have my, my module manifest and the entry point. These are all things that are required in Joomla for standard modules. I have my helper file. So what I did here is, um, I'll show you my, my view file first. Can everyone see this okay? Okay, great. So it's really simple, it's a form, it has an input. I have an input uh, type text, meaning data, and I have a submit. And I have an empty div I call status, so it's something that I can target with my JavaScript to update and manipulate and change. In my entry point into the module, I wrote my JavaScript. Now, in a production situation, you probably wouldn't do this. This is here just for example, so you can kind of see the JavaScript, you can play with it, you can manipulate without having to access different files and recompile things and minimize, minimize, minify, sorry. What I'm doing here is to walk through this code. And, and honestly, the JavaScript's probably the most complicated part of Ajax in all of this. So I'm using, oh, can't use the uh, laser pointer while it's plugged in apparently. There we go. So uh, this is jQuery. Anyone know what this is, this little bit right here? Two lines. I'll give you a piece of chocolate if you get it right. In fact, I will give you a t-shirt. I will give anyone a t-shirt if you can tell me why I have this function dollar sign up here and this jQuery thing down there. Yes, you just want a t-shirt. <laughs> it's a... It, it's called a self-invoking anonymous function. And basically I it's... Not, I would have chocolate and a Absolutely. Oh, I'll give you both. Here, <laughs> have some chocolate. There we go, woo! So uh, basically, this is another way of writing your jQuery in a no conflict fashion so that you don't have to make that additional, in my opinion, useless HTTP request to call another jQuery file that says no conflict. You know, so if, if every piece of uh, jQuery was written like this, it would never collide with tools. You wouldn't have that conflict with borrowing the dollar sign. So this is something I, I throw in all my talks to kind of recommend as a best practice. Who else wants chocolate? Let's see, not a very good chocolate. All right. Why not? Hey, excellent. Okay. Best for last. Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. But one underhand throw is the, is the worst throw. Yes, we have everyone on chocolate now. Okay. So, 
This is my JavaScript. I'm using the on click event. When you click input type equals submit. Now, obviously, you wouldn't do this in a production environment because when any input and when any submit input was clicked, it would fire the JavaScript. But this is a good example. Basically, when you click the input type equals submit, it fires this function. My value variable is the value of my input name equals data. My request option equals com ajax, module equals hello, hello ajax world, data equals the value of my input with the name equals data, or my raw. Make sense so far? So then jQuery makes the ajax request type equals post, the data, which is this whole request kind of crunched into one little thing. And then if there's a success, I'm updating my status data that I showed you earlier with a response. So basically, to kind of reiterate, this is my input name equals data. When I click my input type equals submit, it sends an Ajax request here and it updates this div. Now to prove to you that I'm not lying. Did I spell that right this time? So, hello Ajax World, Atlanta rocks. So, I know it's a very mundane, simple example, but it's easy. It's a very easy thing to do. Now, the beautiful thing about this, this is my entry point into my my module. You'll see here my class is mod hello Ajax world public status function get Ajax and then here I'm using um, basically J input to get the value of the data URL parameter and then just returning a fixed string plus the data that I'm pulling out of the URL. Pretty simple, pretty basic, pretty easy. Questions? So this still Sorry? It is. What it is, what's happening. Yes, what it, what's happening is when I click submit, my when I click submit, I'm gonna show you the page source here. This is the page source. Oh, this is a little messy. We have some different scripts being loaded here. This is actually the rendered page source. When I click the input, the submit input, the JavaScript is making an HTTP request to the server. It's actually making the request to com Ajax and saying, com Ajax, I want you to pass along this request to this module helper file. And it actually it submits the values basically to it and then the helper file does its thing returns a response and then com ajax sends it back. Yes. Yep. It might make it might help a little bit if we look at a more uh, advanced example. Yep. All right. Um, so Okay, so this is a slightly more complicated example. This is an, a session module. So what this does, this is using um, PHP sessions to store data submitted uh, to the server. You can add values, you can delete values, you can destroy the entire session within the module. So um, just to kind of show you what's happening here. My response right now, I'm returning a response in the debug format so you can kind of see it. This is what you would use as a developer if you want to see what's happening. So we have hello Atlanta, that's in my PHP session. Now, 
just to kind of prove to you that I'm actually using PHP sessions and not the magic of JavaScript and smoke and mirrors, I'll click around the site, getting started. So I'll throw a third thing in my session and you'll see, hey, I have persistent data. So this would be a way around getting around one way to get around cookies, okay. the real world example, and this is actually a simplified version of what led to the creation of Com Ajax to begin with, is the Guggenheim needed a shopping cart-like functionality. Basically, they wanted people to be able to go to an online catalog of artwork and just to click a few buttons to indicate which artworks they like and to compile a customized list and then have that, have that list populate a form. So there really wasn't any currency transaction, but it was like a shopping cart. You say, I like this, I like that, I like this. And we ended up doing this with PHP sessions and just a simple module. So this is persistent data through multiple uh, page requests. So I can just click around there. And then I can actually delete a value. I can kill everything. So to show you how it's a little more more of a real world example, this is the helper file, and this is really where things are different. So in this particular case, we have a whole bunch of stuff up here that sets sessions and looks for URL parameters and whatnot. But you can see here, I'm actually looking, I have a, really the, the bulk of what's happening here is, you know what I'm seeking? Hop up here to presentation mode. That should make it a lot better. All right, slightly overwhelming, but uh, you can see here, line 31. I can go next door and use binoculars, but. So I'm looking for a command parameter. This is one of those optional parameters that you can pass and use on your own. And so based on the value of that command parameter, I'm doing different things. So if command equals add, I'm adding data. And data is actually an additional URL parameter that I'm passing. So if command equals add, I'm adding the data. If it's delete, I'm deleting the data. If it's restore, I'm destroying the session. And here at the bottom of my helper file, if there's session data, I'm returning that session data. So here, this I'm using different um, submit buttons to do different things. I could have theoretically used different functions within my class to do these different things. Different way to do the same thing, basically. But it's, uh, you know, in my opinion, pretty simple. And this is basically a slimmed down version of the code that we use to create that shopping cart like functionality. Yes? So, in order for all this to work, I see you have session data, data chunk equals the value. <coughs> Could you have just done something like a, I don't know, some kind of numbered list so you'd have one, two, three, four, five instead, or would that screw things up? Um, so the question is, could I so, use... So you in your example, when you stuck in Atlanta, you had bracket Atlanta equals yes, Atlanta. Yes, absolutely. So just... Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and, and that would be uh, basically that you would do... Uh, this is why I didn't go into presentation mode. It's hard to jump around. In that particular case, yeah, I have my, my JavaScript still on my entry point. That is, would be something... All right, so I'm going to do something really dangerous here. No, I'm not. I'll break it. I know I will. But basically, that is something that you, you could do here, for example, in your, in your response. Okay, so when you spit it back out, you just say... Yeah, you could throw some list tags on there and whatnot and okay. whatnot. More candy. You guys need candy. Everybody gets candy. Well, it's the end of the day, you know, let's uh, just lighten things up. Oh, good catch. <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah, it's it's pretty simple. A lot of it, it's about the JavaScript. Sure. The whole thing about Com Ajax, Com Ajax makes it possible. Now, um, plugins. 
Anyone interested in plugins? No. Plugins are kind of a strange beast when dealing with AJAX because you really wouldn't use them in an AJAX application. But Capcom AJAX also allows you to make HTTP requests directly to plugins. So let's set aside the AJAX part of things for a moment. In Joomla right now, you cannot, you can make an HTTP request to a plugin, but there are some risks involved and some potential issues. The first issue is that to do it right now in Joomla, you'd have to create a system plugin that basically fires on every request, and that plugin would inspect the URL for maybe a special parameter and value. And if that plugin finds it, then it would return a response. Now, obviously, there is a risk of a component also using that URL parameter, then firing a plugin and the component, and things collide, things collide, and then you have some issues there. Another theoretical issue is the additional overhead of firing that plugin every time on every request. So that's where Com Ajax comes into play. You can use Com Ajax to fire a plugin on specific requests and only on those requests. So the example I have for you today is something new I'm working on. It's a new set of plugins to allow you to um, dynamically inject content in Joomla. The extension I'm working on is called Injector. And it allows you to dynamically inject fully templated content items in Joomla anywhere you want. So the 30 second sales pitch is that you can inject an article, a K2 item, a zoo item, a module, and potentially other component content items anywhere you want in Joomla where you can put some sort of text and uh, my spin on things is you can designate a template style. So you can have three different injections with three different styles of Joomla articles. You can create your own template overrides for these injections. Uh, each template can have its own set of overrides. So really it's all about being able to have granular control of what that injection looks like. Now to support that, I wanted to make it easy to, to create those short codes. So I created an Ajax plugin. Now this actually uses three plugins. There's one plugin that's a system plugin to render what that shortcode is. There's a second plugin. These are the, the little Joomla editor extended buttons. Where Com Ajax comes into play is the response. When I click this button, I'm creating a modal. Now in Joomla, normally when you have a modal, this is actually this is typically a view within a component. Now, when I was thinking about creating this, this extension, I didn't really want to create a component because I'd have to create, you know, a lot of files and a lot of complication just for one simple view. So the answer was com Ajax. I'll create an Ajax plugin that returns a response when I call com Ajax and gives it certain, certain values. Now, the irony is I'm, at, I'm not actually using Ajax in this application, but I'm leveraging com Ajax in a different way. So, you know, I can just change my drop down here and I get different content items I can choose from. I can just click a button and it inserts the, I'm sorry, the short code the top of the page. I'll save it. And let's see here. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I apologize. My, um, demo site is different than my dev site. So I'll just, real quick, I'll show you, see if we can see that. Actually, I'll pop up open. So this is the Joomla core article button. When you want to insert a link to a Joomla core article. And you can see up here at the top, we're calling com content vehicles articles layout equals modal. You see we're calling a component. In my injector button, oh, sorry about that. We're calling com Ajax plugin equals injector. So this, this everything you see here, is from a plugin. Two files, and we're done. So I'll just uh, insert something at random. We'll save it, go to our homepage, 
And you can see in my Joomla article, I now have the administrator components article dynamically injected into it. The whole point, as far as it's relevant to this talk, is I'm using an AJAX plugin to populate this whole model you see here. Instead of creating a component and a view and all that other stuff just for one, one view, basically. Isn't that kind of the same thing as what modules anywhere or anywhere? Yeah, basically. It's very similar. You know, the, the big difference is I'm, I'm, I'm supporting layouts and okay. template overrides. Um, I'm kind of combining it all in one, into one as well. I'm not trying to be a competitor either. Just, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's very similar. So, so the theoretical application beyond this is, for example, if you're using a third-party extension and you need to create an additional view, let's say, for example, in modal, you could just create an AJAX plugin to populate the contents of the modal or uh, you know, even bootstrap a view into it without having to actually alter that component. That's one situation we run into in the Guggenheim is we're using third-party extensions. We want to maintain compatibility with them. We don't want to hack them up. So we're using you know, Com Ajax different ways to create different views and, and access them different ways. Yes? So it, it seems like for the plugin part, is it really helps workflow. That's, that seems to be, I'm just trying to extract this out, how you're using it. It's really helping you kind of bootstrap a workflow so that it's a lot easier to do without having to build a huge amount of stuff to do it. Absolutely, yeah. The, so the question is, using Com Ajax for plugins helps improve workflow? Absolutely. It helps you ensure that that plugin's only being fired and specifically requested, not accidentally with other requests. Exactly, not with everything else. There are plugins out there that have very similar functionality, but they're firing every request in the admin. Actually, they fire in every request, period. So that, offer, that adds some overhead to your application. The other thing, too, is that this is the, this is my injector plugin. I have language files. I have an additional, this is basically a layout for the modal. But the reality is, the plugin only has to be two files. Basically, the, uh, the manifest that tells Joomla what it is, and then the actual PHP that fires on the AJAX request. And I will show you that code right here. Now this is a lot of code in this plugin right now because I'm doing a lot of stuff in there right now. But you can see that here, I'll scroll down a little bit. We have our, our plug Ajax injector extends J plugin, which is standard Joomla plugin code. And right about there, line 38. In my URL, my, my HTTP request, it's option equals com ajax, plugin equals injector, format equals, actually in this case I'm using HTML. Because I'm saying, because I'm, I'm calling plugin equals injector, my ajax event is on ajax <coughs> injector. And then it does its thing, a whole lot of stuff, and then it, it returns the response here at the bottom. And that's it. Another example, uh, or possible implementation, uh, this is available on GitHub as well, is if you wanted to provide API-like functionality on a website to where other websites could consume data from yours. So, uh, for example, I wrote a very simple plugin. Um, you know what, I can... called uh, Latest Articles. So this is the Ajax Latest Articles plugin. Two files, the manifest and the actual PHP file. And the PHP is quite simple. Option equals com Ajax. Plugin equals latest articles. 
So that would fire the on Ajax latest articles event. In my Aegis art latest articles plugin, I'm just running a query. Give me the last most recent five articles and then return them. So for example, you could create a plugin like this to provide API-like functionality. You could authenticate users, like external consumers of your data through just a simple plugin and then return a response of whatever data they're looking for. So instead of having to create an entire component to do something like this, you just need a few lines of code in your plugin. So that kind of brings us full circle back to the entire point of Com Ajax is to provide a centralized solution for requests like this. The in primary application is Ajax and modules, but there's a secondary application of direct H HTTP requests to plugins that are developed for it. And um, by providing a centralized solution, hopefully making everyone's lives easier. Uh, any other questions? I have four more pieces of candy. <laughs> Who wants them? All right. That's one. All right, that's two. No, 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 no. All right. I already have two. All right, fine. <laughs> Wow, and it's a Reese's milk chocolate peanut. This one's, this one's mine. All right, score. Okay, so we have a one 12 month subscription to Red Component to give away. Hmm. I already won one. You already won one. Okay. I'm going, okay. I'm going to ask first person to answer this question correctly. If I'm creating a module called. Atlanta rocks, and I'm making an Ajax request to it, and I, my, and I want my response in a JSON format, what would be the URL, URL parameters I'd have to include in my HTTP request? Uh, the module is Atlanta rocks. Atlanta rocks, that's your module. Okay. Format. Format. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> option equals. Com Ajax. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Close enough. Yes. So, option equals Com Ajax. Module equals Atlanta Rocks. Format equals JSON. That would be the HTTP request you'd make in your JavaScript to get whatever response you're, you're supplying yourself. So I think we're actually out of time. So uh, unless you have any other questions, we'll call it that. You can um, oh, I have to go back to the obligatory thank you slide. You can find this, uh, present, this presentation online at creambrain.com slash pod slash hello Ajax world. You can find me online virtually everywhere looking for a between brain. Uh, this presentation is supposed to be online here pretty soon. Link to from the Juma Day Atlanta website and uh, Joomla Ajax interface on GitHub is the organization for the 1.5, 2.5 version of the component plus modules and plugins. Thank you. <laughs> okay.